What's going on everybody? Yellow Mustang here again with another Roblox scripting tutorial. Today we're going to be doing tables, what they're good for, um, the uh, basic commands with the tables. So let's go ahead and jump on into it. Let's, let's explain what a table is to you guys. So to start making a table, you're going to give your variable name and you're going to put some brackets there, right? So this is how you, you start a table always is you're using brackets, okay? So to put stuff, so this is what an empty table would look like. To put stuff on the table, it's pretty simple. You know, this is my table, okay? So so now you can see, you know, we got um, four different strings in here, four words. Um, this is my table. So we got four objects in here. So the way a table works is um, each one of these is basically assigned a number within the table. So if we actually wanted to print the first object in there, it'd be R table um, brackets uh, one. Okay, closing brackets, not R, not out R R table one. So it's going to be this because just remember in Roblox it starts at one. Um, this would be two, three, four, etc. So let's go ahead and uh, run this here. This, okay. So it's printing the uh, the first object in the table. We can also do another nifty command here with tables to make this easier. So we could do uh, print the unpack command. It's going to automatically unpack the table and print everything on one nice little print line. Make it real easy on us here. So we're going to just print. Uh, the table unpacked and you can see this is my table all right all together on one line very organized very neat so let's go ahead and show you so so if we go for I V in pairs our table do okay so I'm gonna show you guys that it is we can run through this now with a um, in pairs loop so it's gonna for every object in this table which is four this loop is going to run so this loop is going to run four times because there's four objects so we can do print our table and then um, whatever object we want to print so since I is going to be changing and going up by one each time this loop is ran we're going to go I here so it's going to start off at one I will be one it's going to print one it's going to go through again loop again print two okay three four etc right okay so let's see it in action here and as you can see so zoom in here a little bit you can see one this two is three my four table okay alright yeah so as you can see each one does indeed have a number assigned to it alright so let's um get in here again and we'll go over some of the um basic commands for tables. So we're going to start off with table.insert because you're going to be needing to probably modify your tables. Well, you're going to need to modify your tables most likely for what you're doing. They're going to be dynamic, you know, they're not going to be static. They're going to change all the time, right? So you're going to be inserting, removing, etc. from your tables. So we're going to go over the table insert command. So with the table insert command, let's look at the uh, syntax here. So um and this syntax is telling us we need a table list. The table list is basically whatever table you want to insert into. So it'd be our table in this case. Uh, the number position. So if you want to assign it an index position, which would be one, two, three, four, or whatever. If you want to assign it like a specific number, you can. You can also leave it blank, and it's just going to default to the end of the table. So go to the last object, add it by one, and then it'll be back here. Okay. So yeah, we got all that, and then um got the value so whatever you want inserted into the table is going to be the value okay it can be a string it could be a number it could be a boolean it can be a reference to an object within the workspace it, it can be basically whatever you need it to be tables are very diverse and amazing just just the way it should be so let's go ahead and finish typing this insert so right we're going to go our table all right so we got our table and then we're just going to insert something at the end of the list we're going to insert some explanation points okay so now we got table insert our table so let's go ahead print unpack our table okay so it's going to unpack our table up here and then it's going to print down here so you can see that the table does change within the script okay so if we look here this is my table and then it runs through and we got the explanation points at the end it automatically defaulted to the end it added a new number for it 
five, which is going to be the um, explanation points now. Okay, so now um, let's go ahead and try and assign it to uh, two. Okay, say we need this to be the second object in this table here. So it's going to automatically insert into the second position and it will push everything down. Okay, so it's going to basically reorganize the table here for us. So let's go ahead and um, see this in action. So you guys understand. And now let's just let's just keep that there. We'll, we'll just keep rolling with it. All right. All right. So we got this is my table, and then you can see this is right. So is slid down to the third spot here. Now we got the explanation points in the second. So it just moved everything down. We got five objects here from four originally. So it did not delete anything. It just slides it over. So it, it's pretty good in certain cases. Sometimes you want to just overwrite it, but if you want to keep everything. You know, still in the table, you're not getting rid of anything. This is a very useful function. So, along with um, insert, we also got remove. So, let's go ahead and check out remove here. So, we got remove, right? Uh, value remove. So, we got our table list. As you remember from the first one, it is the, uh, the actual table we're referencing. So, our table in this case, the um, and the number pause. Okay, so it's just asking for whatever number we give it. So, if we want to remove two, it's going to be this one, three, this one, four, table, right? So we'll just tell it remove from our table, okay? And then if we want to remove the second value, remove is, then it's going to remove is, okay? And it's going to slide all these up, up by one. So it's going to be this, my table, one, two, three, okay? Because is is gone, and it's going to reorganize our table here. So let's go ahead and uh, check it out, see? Okay, so we got this is my table, right? And then one, two, three. So this my table is is gone. It's reorganized. My went ahead and took two. Table took three. It's organized, you know. All right, so we got remove covered. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over sort. So go ahead and uh, do the sort. So basically, um, we uh, give it the uh, the table that we want to organize here and uh, the table list which is going to be our table in this case again um, I'm going to ignore this for now this is going to be more in depth but by default it's going to sort uh, alphabetically so if we do our table then um, you're going to see everything will be alphabetically organized so is this is my table now it is is my table this because this is all alphabetical now Okay, and then we could do um, uh, concat. We do let's see here, concat. All right, so we got a, a string concat table dot concat um, string list our table again string sep uh, like this the separator where we're gonna use to um actually uh, separate each value so let's, let's read through what the uh, Roblox description is of this so given a list where all elements are strings or numbers returns the string list I separating list I plus one to sep list J okay so so J is gonna be where you want it to end I is gonna be where you want to start leave that blank and then it's just gonna run through your your whole list pretty much okay so the way you use this is you'd go Okay, so let's clear this out a little bit. So it's kind of it's kind of similar. It's going to look similar to the unpack command, but there's more you can do with this. So let's go ahead and do um, print table dot concat here, and we're going to go ahead and do our table. Okay, and then we're going to separate with this. Okay, so it's going to put a space in between each each object here. So let's go ahead and see see if this works. Oh, okay. Missed the uh, missed the thing there. Yeah, missed the parentheses. That's good. All right. So now we got this is my table. We're putting spaces in between each value. So it's gonna run through. It's gonna concat. So it's basically gonna combine everything, and then whatever this is, you can change this. It's gonna be in between each value. So if you didn't have anything here, it would be all together in one. If you wanna change this to like commas or something for some reason, make it look more like a list. Then you can see now it's broken up by commas. You can put, you know, whatever you want in here. You can put entire words. So you can put, like, yeah, LOL, whatever. 
boom. Okay, this LOL is my LOL my LOL table. Okay, so you can see table concat basically is going to take all of our values and then put this in between each value, however you want to do it, you know. It's it's up to you. Um let's see, anything else with tables? So yeah, also with tables. So those are the uh the main functions here with tables. So there's another way to uh redefine tables. So if you go R table to equals not. Okay, so this is gonna define um uh the uh, second um index in here, index in the table, you know, one, two is it's gonna replace it with not. So unlike the actual insert command, when you want to replace it completely, you can use use this. And this is referring to the second object in the table. It's gonna replace it with not. If we do our table, you know, five equals end. That is going to go all the way to the fifth index here to the end of the table and then we can see so let's go ahead and just make this simple for us unpack our table and we can see what's what's going on here if uh, this stuff gets replaced and added so you can see this not my table end okay so the is is just completely gone it's replaced right so we're redefining what this is right here okay so um yeah that's another way of doing that if you want to replace it that way just you know food food for thought there on if you want to do it that way um let's i'll give you an example let's say let's say we want to insert all of these players here into a table to kind of keep track of them so let's so in some cases you want to start with a blank table so if you're going to use like a script to um actually add to the table it's fine leaving it blank here so we could do um uh, for I V in pairs, workspace, get children, do, and then we can do um, if B dot parent or no B find first child humanoid, then okay, so it's gonna it's gonna run through all the objects in workspace, so. Workspace get children is another example of a table pretty much. It's going to run through workspace, create basically a temporary temp well, oh, I can't speak. Temporary table here and um and then we can run through it with i and v. So again, i is going to be the index of this temporary um table we got going on here. v is going to be the actual object within the table, right? So it's going to run through it. So v is going to constantly be changing. So for V, find first child humanoid, uh, then we can insert it into our table as you remember. So it's pretty simple. So we go, remember our table, right? And then we'll just insert it at the end of our table here. And then we can find everything that is alive. So everything that's alive will be, let's, let's rename this. So let's do it, alive players, okay? So we got alive players there now in this table. And then we could do um, print. Uh, let's see, number of players alive. And then we can do, actually, I forgot to mention this to you guys. Um, if you actually put the number sign before your table, then you can actually see how many um, objects are within the table there. So, do uh, number of players alive, do another space there. And then we can do um, alive players. Okay, live players. Let's zoom out a little bit there, and then we do um, unpack. We'll just unpack our tables. Live players, and then uh, yeah, that should be should be pretty good there. Let's clean that up a little bit. So so it's gonna print number of players alive. It's gonna print how many objects are actually in the uh, alive players. It should be, you know, how many how many uh, objects in workspace actually have a humanoid within the model. So and then it's going to print the um, alive players, and then it's going to print everything that's in the table. Okay, so let's see if this works. Oops. Okay, so we're gonna have to do um, dot name. Wait. I 
think can we do this? Maybe. Okay, let's let's do an experiment here, guys. Let's see if we can do print uh, name like this. Uh, name. Um. Let's see. Two string. So you guys can learn something new here today. So a two string will just convert basically any value to a string if possible. Let's we'll see if that prints. Okay, so we got number of players live. Tell them on. Okay, so so this is a perfect example. So uh, unpack a live players isn't really working because it's not strings in the table anymore. It's actually uh, objects. It's like objects referenced in the workspace. So it's not just a, a, a string of text. It's like literally referring to... The uh, the objects in workspace. So let's let's go ahead and um and get get rid of that. Um, we'll do table dot concat right like we did before. So we can just do alive players and we can put a space in between each one, a space, and we'll put a comma too. So it's going to make a nice little list for us here. And let's see if we can put this in a two string here because. We need we need this to be a, a, a um, user data for concat. Players dot. Can we do dot name maybe? Table expected got nil. How can we print? this simply on one line table.concat okay so let's let's make this easier on ourselves here um let's just insert the uh the actual name into it here so let's we'll do table concat so it's going to insert the name which is going to be a string it's going to tell us what the name is of the players so that's all we're looking for here Yeah, my bad. Let the name here. All right, so table dot concat alive players. All right, so there we go. So we got six alive players, and it tells us the alive players are Telemon, Fred, Tom, MySpace, Jerry, and Roblox. Okay. So that would be an easy way to figure out uh, what players are alive in your game. So using using the actual tables. Okay. So let's say um, when one of these players dies, right, we want to remove it from the alive players because the player isn't alive anymore, right? So we're going to do um, uh, workspace.child removed, right? The child removed event. And it's going to call this anonymous function here. So whenever something's removed from workspace, it's going to call this anonymous function here. Child remove actually will tell us what is removed from workspace and it will be passed onto this OBJ, which will be the object. So we'll do um we'll go ahead and check our table for if the player is alive or not. So let's go ahead and do for IV in pairs alive players do and then if be equals to object dot name then okay so so let's go over what's happening here so we're gonna run through everything in our table as we did before right so for each object in a live players we're gonna run through and we're gonna check we're gonna check if the play we got the um, the name in here so we're gonna check if the name in the table is equal to the the uh, whatever just got removed from workspace so if the the name is equal to itself then we're going to do table dot remove um, see alive players and then we're going to remove from the index okay so whatever so this is why the index here in pairs is very useful when working with tables so we got I here so we know which index we're on because we're looping through right each time it loops through it's gonna let us know what object we're on so 
We're going to do Telemon, Fred, Tom. So if Tom gets removed from the workspace, we're going to be on the three, third iteration. It's going to know we can uh, easily remove now a live player's eye, which is going to be Tom. Okay. So we'll go ahead and remove it. And then we will print. Uh, we'll print V. Concat that. V has has died it has been removed from the table okay and then at the end of this we can do um, table uh, concat concat alive players and we can do um, do print, put this in a print, we'll do uh, current alive players and then it will go ahead and print all of the uh, players left in that list and it's going to separate them with um, the actual comma and a space here and it's going to print out nicely in our our console here okay so let's go ahead and see what this does so we got our alive players so let's say Tom Tom dies so in Roblox when a player dies uh, if you ever played Roblox you can see that the uh, when you respawn your old character gets removed from workspace and basically a new player is inserted into workspace so we can see here remove Tom boom Tom has died it has been removed from the table current alive players Telemon Fred MySpace Jerry Roblox okay so you can see the table just takes him out. Okay, boom, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Now we only got our Roblox guy here that's alive. So in a game, if you're using, if you're trying to make rounds or something like a survival death match, say where the players got to kill each other, you can use tables, you know, to check which player is uh, still actually alive and actually end the round when um, there's only one player left. So let's go. Let's go a little bit more into this using some more logic here. So, we'll go ahead and say it has died, removed from the table. So, we can do if um, number um, of alive players equal to 1. Let's do um, equal to or less than 1. Less than or equal to 1, then local m equals so we'll go ahead and make a new uh, message in the workspace okay and we'll, we'll make it say the round has ended and we'll add um, players so let's actually make sure this is equal to 1. So when the alive players is equal to 1, then it's going to um, print M text. The round has ended. Alive player is 1. So it should be the only player left in the table here. It's going to be at the first index, right? Because table remove automatically shifts everything. It organizes it. So the round has ended. And then we'll put his name in here. So it's got the name is the winner. Let's uh, bring this down here. It's the winner. Okay, so so now we're gonna go ahead and create a new message, um, and then we'll game get service debris debris. I mean, my, my bad. Add item. M. We'll make the message stay in the workspace for three seconds. Okay. Let's go that there okay so you, you can see what's happening now so all it's gonna do now is just check and see if, if there's only one player left then obviously that player is one right so we're gonna do create a new message in workspace we're gonna print the player's name and then we're gonna get rid of the message okay so let's let's see if this works there we go here eliminated 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 right eliminated and uh, eliminated round of winner Fred is the winner right and then boom, round is over. You know, you can run your script, get everybody back in the lobby, whatever, and then you can move on, okay? 
with the game and you know it creates a clean clean little loop there you know all you got to do is just check with this so um that pretty much concludes table that's my example for you guys you know if you enjoyed the tutorial remember to leave a like subscribe and uh stay tuned for more all right thank you for watching